Okay, so this is a, uh, a video I'm doing for uh, five different uh, biochemical tests. Right, mantol salt, McConkie, eosin methylene blue, gelatin, and starch. Right. Normally, you know, this is, I'm doing this for the online lab. If we did this in lab, right, we would be inoculating these media with bacteria. They would grow on the surface. We've already done, at this point, we covered five different stains. Okay. You've been doing PMPs for those stains. You're going to be doing PMPs for this media. They're, the directions for those are different. I made a video for the PMPs to explain what to put. All right. The purpose here is to identify Staphylococcus, for instance, that goes in your purpose. The principle, use complete sentences for the remaining what's the remain what's remaining on the lap, uh, on the slot for that for the principle. When you study for the quizzes, you should watch the video. And you can use these PowerPoints. This po well, it's one PowerPoint for that. And I'm going to make a video for the unknown and the practical as well. All right, and that will contain the information. You know how you're going to use this PowerPoint to uh, help identify what your unknown bacteria is. So, right now with these media. All right, so here's a plate. The auger is in the bottom. This is the lid. You streak out the plate with a with a loop, and then the bacteria are going to grow on the surface. Sometimes you put the bacteria, and they grow on these slants too, right? You, you open this top up, and you take a loop, and then you inoculate. So I showed a video about that, and the bacteria grow. So some tests we're going to talk about. You use a petri dish. Others, we're gonna want to talk about. You might use a tube instead. Okay. So the mantle salt auger. If you have a skin infection, right, then the lab that's going to identify what's causing your skin infection would use this type of media. They would take the swab that they say put in your wound. And the bacteria would be on the swab. They put the, they inoculate. You can see here there's bacteria growing in this area of the swab. There's a couple of colonies there. They're growing here. The bacteria are growing there on this plate. Not so much in the middle. I'm not sure why they struck these plates the way they did, but that's what they did. Right, and then if the media turned yellow after inoculating it with your, the bacteria that's causing your infection, it would identify the bacteria as being Staph aureus. Okay. It's Staph aureus because Staph aureus ferments the mannitol that's contained in the media. It's a carbohydrate. It's like, a, it's like glucose. It's a sugar. Right? If they have the enzymes to break it down, the pH goes down and this media becomes yellow. Now if they grow on the media, right, and, and it doesn't change the yellow color, then it's normally staph epidermidis, and that's not normally a problem. You normally find that on your skin growing most of the time, and it doesn't cause too many problems, right? Boils and things like that. That's usually staph aureus is notorious for that. So staph epidermidis doesn't ferment mannitol, pH doesn't change, and it remains red. So when you start with this media, it's, it's red in color. It's red because it contains phenol red. That's the indicator. It indicates the pH. Yellow, the pH went down. If it stays red, the pH didn't change. So, this inhibitor, if you put bacteria on here, nothing grew on the plate. Right? Like most other bacteria won't because they can't tolerate a high sodium chloride content. So you refer to that as an inhibitor. So when I ask you questions on the quiz or the practical, it'll be what's the inhibitor, what's the indicator, what's, what's fermented on this media, what grows on it, right? Staphylococcus aureus will grow and generate a yellow color. 
So McConkey is another petri dish, right? It has like a, a faint pink color to it before you uh, add bacteria to it. Okay, and the purpose of the McConkey is to grow enteric bacteria, gram negative bacteria that are found in our colon. Right, they normally are normal, they call normal flora. And it differentiates between if they ferment lactose or they don't ferment lactose. Okay, so if, in order to ask that question, you have to put lactose in this media, just like in this media, there was mannitol. So there's no mannitol in the Makaki, there's lactose. If a bacteria can ferment the lactose, they have to grow and generate colonies. All this pink stuff are bacteria growing. Sometimes they grow on one long line, a couple times there's colonies. But they grew on the surface, and the colonies become pink. So if they, if you lack ferment lactose, you get a pink colony. You see pink colonies on this. So E. Enterobacter aerogenes gives a pink colony. E. coli gives a pink colony. This looks dry or powdery, and this has a mucoid look. It's wet looking, so they call it mucoid pink color. So there are indicators: neutral red. Right? It indicates the pH, but helps generate this pink color. If they don't ferment lactose, then you don't get the pink color in the colony. It would appear white or translucent, depending on the bacteria. I don't have an example of that on here. But a white colony means they're not E. coli, they're not enterobacter aerogenes, and they didn't ferment lactose. But those are the kinds of questions you can answer. So this will grow bacteria. The inhibitor, crystal bile salts, inhibit gram-positive bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria is a group of bacteria. 90% of bacteria medically relevant are either gram-positive or gram-negative. So it's just a, a way of referring to groups of bacteria. Okay. So, like I say, with the practical in the quiz, what's the inhibitor of McConkey? What's the indicator of McConkey? What's fermented or what's the substrate in the media for the bacteria to eat? It's lactose. You should know powdery pink describes E. coli, mucoid pink describes enterobacter aerogenes. Okay. So, eosin methylene B blue or EMB auger. It's a petri dish as well. You only see a part of the petri dish here. But you can see the surface a little bit better. The purpose of this is written there, right? It's the verb first line. Used to find food contamination. Right? If, if E. coli is in the lettuce, this helps you identify that it's there. It's another way of putting it. Right? Skin infections or wound infections. MSA. We just talked about that. Food contamination, EMB. So the inhibitor and the indicator are the same in this media. Eosin methylene blue. Okay, and, and it'll it'll only grow enteric or gram negative bacteria. Gram positive bacteria like Staph epidermidis and Staph aureus will not grow on this plate. Okay, so lactose is in the media for the bacteria to ferment. And you get what's called a, a green metallic sheen for if, if E. coli grows on this plate, you refer to the description of the colony or the bacteria as a green metallic sheen. If enterobacter aerogenes grow, then you get what's called, looks like a fish eye uh, look because the colony is pretty big and translucent except in the very center, you get this really dark color. I think it's like a dark purple, almost black. If they grow together, you don't really see the fish eye over here. This is a bunch of bacteria, a bunch of colonies grown together. Okay, so a colony is generated from one bacteria that divides and be there. In a one colony, there could be a million bacteria. But when the colonies all grow together, they generate looks like lines of growth instead of colonies. These are colonies. You can see them. It's much better when you look at this PowerPoint uh, with your uh, computer 
it'll look much more clear than this, what the projector is projecting. All right, now this is a tube. They've got it tilted, but the gelatin is added to the media, and it can be used as a carbon and energy source. And generally, it's a protein, so you don't think, you don't refer to fermenting proteins, right? But if the bacteria has gelatinase, then it can degrade the protein gelatin into amino acids, and then the amino acids are small enough to get into the bacteria, and they can use it as a food source, okay? Just like they use glucose or mannitol as a food source. They can use the gelatin as long as they digest it first. It's just like when we put proteins in our stomach, we have to digest the proteins into amino acids and they get absorbed in our bloodstream. So the purpose of the gelatin tube or gelatin media is to do bacteria secrete gelatinase, right? And that's the enzyme. ASE means it's an enzyme that breaks down gelatin. If you break down the gelatin, it goes from being a solid, they're putting this on the side so you see it's not, you can tell it's liquid or not. Right? This is, right, the, the, you, you, you inoculated the tube, the bacteria grew, they secreted gelatinase, and the gelatin broke down, and it becomes more liquidy. You liquefy it, is another way of putting it. Right, so that's what, in your principle, if the organism has secreted gelatinase, it needs the gene for ge the enzyme, then it secretes it and causes the gelatin. Hydrolyzed means it's broken down to amino acids, and it be you get a liquid look. Right, so there's no inhibitor in this media. There's no indicator in the media. Right, what indicates the fact that it's positive is liquefaction. And then you, you should include the positive test. Right? If it's liquid, you need to add. If it turns liquid, you need to put it on ice for five minutes. If it's solid after that, then it's negative. Okay? If it remains liquid after you put it on ice, then it's still it's positive because the temperature can cause this to become liquid. If the temperature gets up above 80 degrees, it starts to become liquid again. So gelatin can be added to media just like auger can be added to make it solidified. So when you, what you do is you take a needle and you stab this, the bacteria grow. They can grow and not use the gelatin. If they grow and they're positive for this test, then it becomes liquid. Okay, now the starch plate is a bit complicated. Okay. The purpose of it is do bacteria secrete the enzyme amylase. Amylase is the enzyme that breaks down starch. Starch is a macromolecule containing many glucoses. Okay. So if you break it into individual glucoses with amylase, the bacteria can absorb the sugar, the glucose, and use the starch right, that the glucose came from. So the, the plate itself contains starch. After the bacteria grow, like you see here, this is bacteria growth, this is bacteria growth, then you would add iodine to the plate and stain it. Iodine stains starch. So the, all this dark area here, you see it all the way over here, all that, there's still starch in the plate. But this little halo, the white part here is bacteria. Bacillus is the genus. And then you get this clear halo around it, and that's where the starch was broken down. Now, if you look, there's no halo around the E. coli. There's some E. coli growing here. They took their loop and they kind of struck down. It looks like there's a few colonies, but they're all growing in this particular area. It didn't secrete amylase, E. coli, so there's no zone around it. Okay, so in your your purpose, do bacteria secrete amylase or have that gene? Amylase is in your principle. You should mention starch plate contains starch, right? If bacteria secrete amylase, they break down the starch and can use the glucose as a 
generated as a carbon energy source. You can detect that by adding the iodine which stains the starch. That should be in your principle. That's what iodine's for. If you don't stain this, if you get an area where you don't see the dark stain, then the starch was broken down. Okay, then this test is positive. Okay, clear zone. They're exoenzymes, meaning that the enzyme gets, the amylase has to be secreted by the bacteria. So it gets, it gets into the, right, where the starch is, there's starch in the, in the entire plate. But in this area, the starch was broken down, and that's why you see a clear zone. Okay, so those are the five biochemical tests. Right, and uh, you, uh, right, they'll be, they'll, this will help you with the PMPs, the next quiz, the unknowns, and for the practical. Okay, study hard.